Hey everybody, good morning. It's Monday. It is August 2nd, uh, believe it or not. Um, and we are starting week six of our time together in English 130. So uh, last night, hopefully you had a chance to respond to two of your peers and submit your initial discussion board response. That was the only thing that was due last week. But this week you have your position paper due. And I'll be continuing to post some tips. Uh, there's some tips down below. I'll be focusing on writing the counter argument. And counter argument is a great way um, if you're writing the paper and you're not quite sure, let's say you are like, ah, you know, I got like two pages. I really want to add some more to my writing, but I'm not quite sure what else to add. Counter argument's a great way to do that. And basically what you do is let's say you're arguing that you want uh, to kill a mockingbird band in, in middle and high school. You would have to then take a look at the other side of the argument and then kind of dismantle it. So if you want the book banned, you would say, um, it is understandable why some people would want to kill a mockingbird in middle and high school. They feel that the book is beneficial because of A, B, and C. However, other research says that the book is not good for them because of A, B, and C. So that's one way to do it. You can think about how the other side would approach it and then kind of chip away at their argument. It's a really effective way to add some more to your writing. And bonus, it makes your writing more credible or trustworthy because it shows that you've thought about multiple points of view. Okay, and that's helpful not just in English writing, in any type of writing, in conversation, really. Okay, so we're talking about symbolism this week, and symbolism is something that's not only important in our lives and how we communicate, but it's, of course, important in stories. And I hope you're noticing that pattern, that things that are important in stories are important in real life, and things that are important in real life become important in stories, because stories are really just a reflection. Um, I heard a great quote, and I apologize, I don't know who it's from, but that stories are basically windows and mirrors to our lives. So windows where we look in and see another way of living and mirrors, reflections of ourselves in our own world. So uh, symbols, right? Symbolism. I wear this little ring, got it at sales. Um, and this is just a piece of metal. That's all it is. It's a circular piece of metal. But as soon as I, you know, put it on to my finger, um, it represents the commitment that I made to my wife, the fact that I'm married. Um, so uh, when you're driving down the road, right, you see that red sign at a four-way intersection. You don't even need to look at the word. You know that means that you need to stop your car and look around, right? When we buy t-shirts of tourist touristy places, New York City comes to mind, right? What do the shirts say? The letter I a heart, which does not look like the human heart, heart, New York City. And we know that that heart, that little drawing of a heart means love. When I read a book to my, and I want to put too fine a point on this, when I read a book to my little girl and a, a character has a light bulb above their head, it does not mean that somebody turned a light on. It means the character had an idea. Okay. In literature, in movies, in stories, um, authors try to use objects, characters, uh, places as symbols for bigger ideas that are going on in the story. Okay. For example, we, you read the lottery last week, that black dot on the piece of paper that Tessie draws, it's just a black dot. But what does it represent in that story? Death, stoning, tradition, same thing with the black box. Notice how when Shirley Jackson describes that box, she describes it as sort of this old box that's been sort of chipped away and it's sort of broken down. But the, the people in the town, they don't want to replace that box because it's going to upset the tradition. Well, that's what that's what the story is about. Even though something's becoming old and outdated, we don't want to replace it because it's tradition. So that box really represents the theme of the story. So what you're going to be doing is you're going to be taking a look at some stories this week. The Gift of the Magi by O. Henry, and then Alice Walker's Everyday Use. Okay, I love Everyday Use. I think it's a great story, a lot of symbolism. And I'm gonna challenge you guys this week. There are some very obvious symbols in these stories, but see if you can to try to find the not so obvious ones um, because sometimes authors plug those in too. You won't get more or less credit if you find the obvious or not obvious ones for sure, um, but just a little challenge to keep things interesting. So this week you're gonna be submitting the discussion board 
You're going to choose a symbol from the gift of the Magi or everyday use and discuss what significance this symbol had to you as a reader and then use examples, uh, use text examples in this section. And then, and I love this question, if someone were to write a story of your life, what symbol would be present and why? How does this symbol represent you? So it's a two-part question. Okay, and then of course, make sure to respond to your peers. And then we've got your position paper due this Sunday. Um, and uh, again, information about counter arguments down below. That's it for now, everybody. I hope you're having a great week and I'll check in with you later. Oh, remember, office hours tonight. If you're having a problem with your paper, you're stuck, you don't know where to go next, please pop into office hours tonight and ask whatever questions you have. All right, everybody. Bye-bye.